Hey guys, this is Jim, KN4YCD, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Look what we've got. We have a box. We have a package. This is the Cartena Aries, our newest antenna from Coffee and Ham Radios. And we're going to put this thing together today. All right. Inside the package, we've got a beautiful winder. This is Multi-Jet Fusion uh, PA12 Nylon. These are, we have these professionally done. These are a whole lot stronger than uh, most 3D prints can be. These winders were designed by our guys, Ape, Chuck, T.O. Inside, we have our parts. Now, my kit is going to be a little different from what you have, and I'll show you why in a second. Let's dump our parts out and take a look. So, <clears throat> you will receive everything you see here. There is one difference. Um, I have a toroid pre-wrapped by the Chuck. Um, he did that because he was testing how he wanted to wrap the wires, so he just threw this one in my kit. So y'all don't have to suffer through watching me try and wrap a toroid. Chuck does a much better job at this than Jim does. But this is what you want your toroid to look like when it's done. Now he's got the ends of the wire taped and he's already put on a zip tie to hold the wires in place. Right? And this is a 9 to 1 transformer that we've created here and that's what you're going to do when you build your toroid. Of course we have shrink wrap to put on your antenna winder after you get everything set up and in place. We have a BNC bulkhead style connector that's going to go on our winder. We have some zip ties. Chuck loves zip ties so he sends a lot. We have some shrink wrap, heat shrink, and then we have assorted connectors here for connecting up our wires. And we have two bolts. One of these will be on the antenna end of the winder and the other will be on the counterpoise end of the wire. All right, so on the winder, Chuck has already got the wire wrapped on here. Let's take this off and take a quick look at it. And we also include these really nice Velcro ties. Um, so after you've used your antenna or to store it, wrap your wire on it, put this around it, and it'll keep all that wire in place from getting all snarled up. So let's unwrap this and see what we've got. Now we're going to be making a 9 to 1 random wire end fed. So when you make a random wire, random wire, it needs to be a length that's not exactly random. It needs to be a certain list of lengths depending on what bands you're going to try and do. So we need to make sure that that's what we do when we cut our wire. So we need to measure out our wire. That's the first thing we got to do. I'm going to go ahead and get our wire measured out and I'll be right back. All right, I've got the wire taken care of and it's out of the way for now. The instructions for the antenna are listed on the website when you purchase it. It's on GitHub and you can download those there anytime. So the first thing we have is the winder and we're going to put one screw and one nut on the winder and this says place them in the lower left corner. It doesn't really matter. It's uh, whatever uh, makes you happy. All right, perfect. So then the next step is to install the BNC connector with the female BNC being protected by the shroud. So similar to that picture like that. We want to put this on with that little cup right there at the end facing up so when we solder it'll be easier to get the solder to flow into it. This goes like so into the winder just like that. There's a washer on either side and that's going to go in the hole on the winder. And then we're going to put our ground lug back on there and we're going to screw the bolt down And you want to make sure when you're doing this that it's tight, but you also don't want to grab the BNC connector with a pair of pliers and bend that at all. All right, and our little cup is facing up, so when I get ready to solder this, it'll solder well. Now the next step on the instructions are to wind our toroid. We've already got it wound, so we're going to skip that part. 
you'll have to read the instructions to wind your toroid. So then Chuck talks about getting our toroid wrapped up and what wires we need to connect. So let's get that done. But you have two sets of wires, three wires each. You have a longer set and a shorter set. The instructions indicate upper and lower wires and you want to orient, orient your toroid set up like this. The short set of wires is upper and the long set of wires is lower. And then it's pretty straightforward from the instructions at that point. So we want to take the upper red wire and the lower black wire. And we want to connect those together. So you will obviously have to strip your wires. All right, so we've got all our wires stripped back. Remember the short wires are the top and the long wires are the bottom when you're referencing the instructions. Especially if you print them in black and white because you can't see the colors. So the upper red wire and the lower black wire go together. And so for now, we're just gonna twist these together. All right, so upper red wire, lower black wire. Upper blue wire goes to the counterpoise lug and the shield on our winder. And I mentioned this earlier, you want that solder cup up, but you also probably want this up where you can get to it. And I didn't have that. So our upper blue wire is gonna to go to the lug right there. And then the upper black wire and the lower blue wire go together and they go to the center conductor. So the upper black wire and the lower blue wire. It doesn't look like there is room for both wires in that center conductor. So what I'm going to do is put a little twist on this and get one end in there like so. So we've got the upper red wire and the lower black wire connected. We have the upper blue wire to the counterpoise lug and shield. And we have the upper black wire and the lower blue together and they are in the center connector. The lower red wire is our antenna connection. And we're gonna put a crimp connector on it and fire it up there. And at this point, we're ready to start soldering and put some zip ties on this guy. Okay, one thing I see that it mentions in the instructions after we put these two wires together is that we have a lot of extra blue wire here on this piece that's going to our center conductor. And we wanna get rid of that. It's too long and we're going to use that to tie to our shield later anyway. So what I'm going to do is undo my twist and I'm going to cut this to the same length as our black wire. Now I've got this this blue wire is hooked where it needs to stay and I don't want to get them confused. So I'm going to put a pinch on that one. All right. These two are going to go to the center conductor. Now again, they're still too big to fit in that hole together. So what I think is going to be best is to just still uh, do a little bit of a twist here. And then get one wire in there and then put solder and bind it together with solder that way. Alright, so that's what we've got so far. Our bottom blue and the top black go together to the center pin. That top blue goes to the ground lug. This will be our antenna lead right here. Now, I think that's a lot of extra wire. We'll come back and revisit that in a second. But let's get our, let's get some soldering done. So these are not gonna move and then we'll move that toroid around. All right, we've got our connectors soldered together. So now, let's take our toroid and fold our wires up, and let's mount this toroid and zip it to the board. Okay, so now we have our toroid zip-tied to the board. And the way I did it, 
uh, is you want to come up with the fat end of the zip tie through this center conduct center hole and the narrow end through the small hole and then you're going to bring them together in the center of the toroid and then cinch them tight. Um, also when you do this you want to kind of make sure that the heads of the zip ties are down in the middle of the toroid just where they're not bulging up out of the shrink wrap later and where they could potentially poke it. So you may need to rotate them around a little bit just to get them so they're below the level of that toroid. All right. But now the toroid is mounted on this frame and it isn't going anywhere. All right. Again, here's our antenna wire. So now we need to make a jumper out of our leftover blue wire. So now we have our jumper wire. So we want to hook this from down here up to the ground lug. So we're going to do that right now. So what we're going to want to do at this point is solder this rascal up here to the ground lug. I won't call it the prettiest solder job in the world, but she's connected. Great. All right, we've made our jumper. We've connected it to the nut and bolt on the winder. Now we want to take our antenna wire and cut off the first 41 feet for our antenna element and then 17 feet for our counterpoise. So here's where your mileage may vary and you can follow these instructions exactly or you can do what I'm going to do. I have played with a 35 and a half foot 9 to 1 random wire on a 4 to 1 9 excuse me a 9 to 1 ballon and I have very good results with it. Okay the next thing we want to do I've got our antenna wires cut and you're going to have extra wire um, so you know feel free if you want to cut it a little longer than 41 at least get your 17 foot counterpoise before you do anything else and then measure out the rest of your wire and cut your antenna radiator length for one of those non-random random lengths. So we've got our antenna wire cut and I cut mine to 35 feet 10 inches to give it a little longer for looping it around and tying it off and yada 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 and we, we can adjust that later. So now we want to get our antenna wire and feed it into our winder and set up our strain relief. So what we're going to do is see that little tiny hole right there in the end. We're going to put our wire through that and then we want to get it up through this first hole. So it's in there and now we just need to hook it up. So now we want to go and take this up on the first hole and down on the second hole and then back up on the third hole. So we're going to go down. All right. So now we want to strip this guy back. I'm going to go old school on this rascal. There we go. And let's put our wire through there. Like so. And then now that we've got that crimped. We're going to drop some solder on that bad boy to give it a little extra strength on the connection. And then give it a tug with pliers because it's hot and make sure she ain't going nowhere. Okay, we've got our antenna wire on. It's connected up over here. This is our antenna lead wire here. This will be our counterpoise and ground here. And I took and put one of the zip ties around the winder right here just so that there's some extra strain relief. The red and the black wire that we joined together, I did solder those two together and put some shrink wrap on them and just folded them over here out of the way. We're, not, we're done with those wires. So the last piece we have to do is to take our counterpoise wire and put a connector on it and then um, solder it up and connect it and we are done and ready to test this bad boy. All right, we've got our tinned. Let's Put it in there and give it a crimp. And as you can see, that crimp doesn't quite catch that wire. So at this point now we're going to solder this whole thing together again, just like we did with the... Uh... All right, that's on there really good. And now we want to connect it up for our counterpoise. And what I should have done is run the wire up through the holes and out uh, to do a strain relief, but I'm going to use the other zip tie and do a strain relief that way. And then I want to tighten these down. So what I'm going to do 
Let's grab this with a pair of pliers and hold on to it and tighten that screw down. So that guy is on there real good and tight. Of course it moved. That's all right. Let me loosen it back up just a little bit and wiggle that thing where I want it. And what I don't want is I don't want this counterpoise wire sticking out the side where it can get bumped or knocked off. Perfect. <clears throat> and then we'll take a zip tie and we'll zip tie this guy to the board somewhere. Cinch him up to our ground connector. And then let's clip the excess off on our zip tie. And there we go. That could be around a little farther, but it'll, it's fine. And so there we go. We have our counterpoise wire. We have our antenna wire. Our inductor is set up. And that is a completed Cartena Ares. And so what I'm going to do now is get everything situated here on the bench. And we'll go get the rig expert and take a look at this. Okay, guys. So we've got the antenna put together. And everything went together fairly well. The antenna hooked up to my rig expert here and it is deployed outside in a sloper configuration to a tripod. The base is basically on the ground and the far end is about 15 to 20 feet up. It is not ideal for transmitting, obviously, but what I want to find out is what it looks like. So from a little below 80 meters to a little above 10 meters and take a look and see what, uh, what everything looks like. All right. So here we go. Okay. Well, fellas, that ain't shabby at all, considering that you have to use a tuner with a 9 to 1 generally, right? We look at this, we can see over here on 80 meters where about 4.7, 4.8 to 1 at the bottom end of the 80 meter band. Um, well within a tuner range, most likely. 60 meters, it's five and a half of an SWR. Down here at 40, we're actually uh, right at three or below on the 40 meter band. 30 meters, we're basically three. Maybe a skosh below three. 20 meters, we are 4.2, something like that. 17, we're about 3.5. 15, we're looking bueno at 3, a little above. And then 12 meters is just gravy. That's about 1.5 to 1 on 12 meters. And this is without a tuner. And then 10 meters, which is a very fat band, we're over here on the low end of about 2.5 to a high end of about 3.2, 3.3. It's all done and I've got her put together. You saw the results. Your mileage may vary. Again, the design that Chuck and Ape and Steve created, it goes with 41 feet. I went with 35 and a half. That's a perfectly acceptable length for a random wire antenna and a little shorter, easier for me to deal with in a small space. I love ham radio. There's a lot of experimentation. So get your kit from coffeeandhamradios.com. These are available as are the Apollo and the Mercury antennas. We also have our signature tumblers available and other merch comes and goes. Guys, this is Jim. Appreciate your time. Have a great one. 73.